Good afternoon. This afternoon has been super discombobulated. Like, I woke up with exactly what I wanted to do today. I wanted to paint. I wanted to get in my sketchbook because I've had these paintings sitting around and I want to finish them. I've just been wanting to do some like realistic elements in the paintings I'm doing. Sort of these portals of realism, like these kind of flashes of realism like in one of my paintings that I've been doing. I want to continue that thread through all the rest. But I want to like hone in on a few skills before I go in with paint. So I wanted to sketch out my ideas and see like if there's anything I need to like improve on before I do that. I also just made a mock-up of one of my paintings too just to see um, to kind of emulate what the painting is like so I could try out an idea before I commit to it. Usually I'm not this intentional, but it's been fun to be just like more calculated in what I'm doing. I'm kind of in a place where planning exactly what I want and kind of making it in a more realistic, and by realistic I mean like in the content, like instead of doing like an abstract landscape, I'm doing like a more realistic landscape. Um, like doing those things in a realistic way allows symbolism and intentionality in a way that like abstract intuitive paint and like fluid painting won't accomplish. And that's really new for me, so that's really interesting. Yeah. For this project, I wanted to take this photo that I took and insert it into one of my paintings, but for practice, I figured I'd use my crayons as well. Probably not the most realistic way it's going to come out, but I thought it would be fun. Okay, so in addition to different styles of painting and creating, like drawing and more realistic elements in my art, I've also decided to spend a lot more time writing this year. I mean, I've been writing a lot, especially since the beginning of 2020, like pre-pandemic. Like I've been journaling in my, on my laptop like pretty consistently, weekly at least. And when I say journaling, I mean like, like word vomit <laughs> type of stuff. And just like ideas that come to me fleshing out like my feelings like situations stuff like that um and also writing poems and stuff but that's kind of been not as potent it's just been really me getting out my story if that makes sense the story in the everyday and kind of what's going on with me so um in april i decided to do uh napo rimo it's kind of like the nano rimo NaNoWriMo is National um, Novel Writing Month. It's in November, basically. I forget what the word count is, but you're supposed to be able to, like... It's it's like a thing that people do to, like, write a novel in the month of November. And, and you, you know, whatever. Anyway, I'm not going to get into that. But So April is National Poetry Month. And so you do 30 days, um, try to do a poem every day. I did it more so of, like, write poetry, period. Like, open the document, write some poetry. That's the thing. Edit 
come up with ideas, research, be in the poetry place, you know? And I feel like, you know, once the month is over, you kind of like, and then you stop. And then you get out of the poetry place. What I want to do is submit to like magazines and journals and stuff like that. However, I never feel like my writing is good enough to do that, which is sad. But I feel like if I write like a volume of poetry, if like I set this goal, I know it's crazy, but if I set this goal of like writing an entire volume of poetry and I complete it, then I will feel like I've probably done enough for myself that I feel like I can then write poetry, even <laughs> submit poetry. But anyway, I've been reading poetry because I'm like, you know, I really want to get into that poetry space, like get back into the poems that I really loved when I got into like reading poetry and actually enjoying it. I want to discover new voices. Like I want to just like enjoy the genre. And I also read Mary Oliver's book, The Poetry Handbook. And one thing that she talks about is reading. And I, I do agree that you should be reading in the genre that you want to write in. If you're not enjoying the reading, then like, can you really write it? I don't know, that's a debate. I'm not into that debate. But anyway, I wanted to share some poems that I've been loving as I've been like reading poems, basically. <laughs> that's what I wanted to do today. So without further ado, let's get into these recently enjoyed poems. I will not be reading all of these poems through, but I hope that if they are intriguing to you, you will find all of the details in the description below and go on to read some of these wonderful poets. This poem is in Ocean Vong's book, Night Sky with Exit Wounds. I'll read you a few of the lines that stuck out to me as it's quite a long poem. I definitely recommend buying this collection of poems. Ocean Vong is just brilliant. While I slept, he burned his last violin to keep my feet warm. He lay beside me and placed a word on the nape of my neck where it melted into a bead of whiskey. We had been sailing for months, salt in our sentences. We had been sailing, but the edge of the world was nowhere in sight. When we left it, the city was still smoldering. Otherwise, it was a perfect spring morning. White hyacinths gasped in the embassy lawn. The fog lifts, and we see it, the horizon, suddenly gone. I pull the mast to full sail. He throws my name into the air. I watch the syllables crumble into pebbles across the deck. The next poem is in this chapbook called Teaching My Mother How to Give Birth by Warson Shire. There are so many poems I love in this chapbook, uh, but I especially love this one called Birds. Sophia used pigeon blood on her wedding night. Next day, over the phone, she told me how her husband smiled when he saw the sheets, that he gathered them under his nose, closed his eyes, and dragged his tongue over the stain. He whispered her name. Sophia, pure, chaste, untouched, imagined his mother back home parading these siren sheets through the town, torso swollen with pride, fleshy wings bound to her body, ignorant of flight. The next few poems are from A Book of Luminous Things, which is an international anthology of poetry. And we have Irises by Lee Young Lee, a poet that I've come to love immensely but this was the first poem I ever read by Lee. In the night, in the wind, at the edge of the rain, I find five irises and call them lovely. I'd like to tear these petals with my teeth. I'd like to investigate these hairy selves, their beauty and indifference. We are not lovers, not brother and sister, though we drift hand in hand through a hall, thrilling and burning as thought and desire, violet becoming blue, growing, black, black, all that an iris ever prays, when it prays, to be. And last, we have Magic Words by an Inuk poet. They are not named, and there's not a lot of detail on it, but this poem really has made an impact on me, and I think about it a lot. In the very earliest time, when both people and animals lived on Earth, a person could become a human being. Sometimes they were people, and sometimes animals, and there was no difference. All spoke the same language. That was the time when words were like magic. The human mind had mysterious powers. A word spoken by chance might have strange consequences. It would suddenly come alive, and what people wanted to happen could happen. All you had to do was say it. Nobody could explain this, 
That's the way it was. And that's all for now. I hope you enjoyed that. Uh, feel free to check out all of the information for these poems and poets and books and volumes in the description down below. On Saturday, I'm at my weekly art collaborative, which we affectionately call Camp. We call it that because we do it in the summer, like summer camp. <laughs> we get together and make art outdoors. We started it in the beginning of the pandemic last year, socially distant art making. It's a group of four women artists and I just love, love our time together. It's playful, creatively enriching and intergenerational connection and mutuality. video if you did please give it a like and subscribe if you haven't already and if you're able to make some time for yourself and your creativity this week i'll see you in my next video bye